Hi everyone. Right now it's 1022 Pacific Time and I have been praying over this for a couple of days now. And I want to share something um, with you. Now, I'm going to talk about Esther in the Bible and I'm going to talk about the resurrection of Jesus. Now, I need to let you know something. Um, my friend Mary did a video. It was called Rapture Imminent. And I, I realized, I kept going over and over it because she spoke in tongues in the video. And I realized that she had said the word Easter seven times. And she said the word Esther six times, I believe. I knew there was something to it, but, you know, I just, I wasn't sure. So what I'm going to do right now is talk to you about Esther, um, the book of Esther, okay? Now, um, we all know that Esther, um, she went before the king, okay, and she was chosen to he was by her but i want to i want to what the thing that um mainly i want to to dwell on here is that there is a correlation between esther and the wedding feast of the bride um so i'm going to read you some stuff that i found on here and it's called Esther's Preparation in Marriage. Esther 2, 15 through 18 are the verses here. When, when the turn came for Esther to go to the king, she asked for nothing other than what Haggai, the king's eunuch, who was in charge of the harem, suggested. And Esther won the favor of everyone who saw her. She was taken to King Xerxes in the royal residence in the 10th month the month of Tibet, in the seventh year of his reign. Okay, now the king was attracted to Esther more than any other woman because she, she won his favor and approval more than any of the other virgins. So he set a royal crown on her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. And the king gave a great banquet. It was Esther's banquet. For who? For all his nobles and officials. Esther appeared for the first time before the Persian emperor with nothing more than what Haggai suggested for her. This distinguished her from the other women. One important att attribute of the faithful church is that she does only what God's revelation tells her to do. In contrast, many others who call themselves Christians follow their own opinions and chase every idea that sounds good or trendy. We must learn as a church to follow the Lord and do His will. So that means submitting, obeying, and nothing else. No rebellion, but obedience. No insubordination, but submission to the word in our life. Okay, so Esther, the wife of the king, is a prophetic symbol of the bride of Christ. The bride of Christ is the faithful church. We know that. <coughs> I'm sorry. <clears throat> which is in Ephesians and, of course, Revelation 19, Revelation 21, 21, 22. Esther completed a full year of preparations for this event, okay? The faithful church, the bride of Christ, right now we are in a period of preparation. We're getting ready for our wedding, the wedding of the Lamb in eternity. For the wedding of the Lamb has come, and the bride has made herself ready. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given her to wear. Okay, that's Revelation 19, 7. 7. Revelation 21. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. Hang on, I'll be right back. Okay, um, I really have a problem with doing videos lately because of my voice, so... Um, just bear with me, okay? Um, the bride has made herself ready. She comes prepared, <clears throat> beautifully dressed for her husband. The first passage above explains that this preparation 
or fine linen of the bride of Christ is actually the personal righteousness of the believers. Spiritual consistency, faithfulness, complete honesty, these are all attributes of the sanctification that make us ready for the rapture. Being rapture ready means living a life of holiness and fruitful productivity for the Lord. God's goal or purpose for us is spiritual maturity, that we attain to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ, which is Ephesians 4.11. Okay, so her first preparation consisted of six months with the oil of myrrh. The anointing oil was used to anoint the high priest. It was olive oil and a mixture of myrrh and other spices. So oil we know, according to Exodus 30, 31 and Psalm 133, Oil is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. And mirror is associated with the death and burial of Jesus. So um, I thought that was really interesting. Now the second preparation, she did six months with perfume and cosmetics. Perfume or incense in the Bible is a prophetic symbol of persistent prayer or intercession. Which is a trait of the second phase in the believer's life. The purpose of cosmetics is to correct or cover minor imperfections in a bride's face. And that speaks of sanctification, the correction of remaining faults and subtle sins. Okay. Which would be why we would be giving robes of righteousness. That's what I got out of that. <clears throat> we will be made as new when the Lord comes to get us. Now, the seventh year of his reign is the biblical number of perfection or completion. God's project will be complete and perfect when the bride of Christ, who is the faithful church, is ready for rapture. So we know we are in the year what? 5777. Now the 10th month is usually, usually the biblical number for trials. Okay, and the 10 plagues of Egypt. So um, the first Babylonian siege of Jerusalem began in the 10th month. That was when Ezekiel received news that Jerusalem was completely destroyed. So the, the beginning of Esther's marriage and reign as queen would involve a very serious trial for who? The Jewish people. And what is the tribulation really about? Jacob's trouble. He's trying to wake up the Jews. So see how this is all correlating together. Now, Esther's banquet, the, the wedding banquet of the Lamb commencing at the rapture begins at the same time as the great tribulation trials number 10 to beth became the hebrew word for the 10th month only during the persian period and it appears to be a word borrowed from other languages meaning rain so this speaks of the blessings of the outpouring of the spirit on the church <clears throat> now I mean, uh, not Ephesians, uh, Esther 2.18. And the king gave a great banquet, Esther's banquet, for all his nobles and officials. He proclaimed a holiday throughout the provinces and distributed gifts with royal liberality. You guys, this has everything to do with the rapture. So um, now um, I'm, I'm going to move on to the resurrection. Okay, because, you know, as much as, you know, I get these comments about Easter or Christmas or whatever, Easter is the day that we chose to, to honor the risen Lord, whether you think it's pagan or not. If you don't think it's pagan, then you're honoring the Lord. You can choose any day to honor the Lord, but I'm not going to get into that. So I'm going to explain why is the resurrection of Jesus Christ so important, okay? That the resurrection of Jesus has so many important reasons. First, the resurrection witnesses to the immense power of God. To believe in the resurrection is to believe in God. If God exists, and if he created the universe and has power over it, then he has power to do what? To raise the dead. Now, we all know the rapture. The dead in Christ shall rise first, and we who are alive will follow. So, are you getting this yet? Okay, if he does not have such power, he is not worthy of our faith and worship. Only he created life can resurrect it after only he who created life can resurrect it after death. So only he can reverse the hideousness that is death itself. He is the one that removes the sting and gains the victory over the grave. First Corinthians fifteen fifty four. 
in resurrecting Jesus from the grave. He reminds us of his, of his absolute sovereignty over life and death. It is very important because it validates who Jesus claimed to be. He is the Son of God and Messiah. His resurrection was a sign from heaven. Okay, That is what authenticated his ministry in Matthew 16. The proof that he had authority at over even the temples in Jerusalem. He attested to by hundreds of eyewitnesses, they provided irrefutable proof that he is the savior of the world. First Corinthians 15 again. Another reason that it's so important that is he proves that his sinless character and divine nature. The scripture said God's holy one would never see corruption. Psalm 16, and Jesus never saw corruption even after he died. It was on the basis of the resurrection of Christ that Paul preached. Through Jesus, the forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you. Through him, everyone who believes is set free from every single sin. Acts 13, 38. So it's a supreme validation of his deity. Okay. Christ's resurrection. Um, it also authenticated his own claims that he would be raised on the third day which was the prophecy he would he told them on the third day I will rise mark 8 31 9 and 10 if jesus christ is not resurrection resurrected then we have no hope now do we seriously we wouldn't we would have no savior no salvation no eternal life it would be useless okay it would be useless so jesus says john eleven twenty five, i am the resurrection and the life Okay, there is no resurrection apart from Christ, no eternal life. Jesus does give more than give life. He is life. And that's why death has no power over him. Woo, that's so exciting, you guys. <laughs> no power. He has no power. Death has no power. And we're going to triumph. As the bride, we are going to triumph soon. Okay. Now remember, Jesus is the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. 1 Corinthians, in other words, Jesus led the way in life after death. As Christians, we know that God became man, died for our sins, and resurrected on the third day. The grave couldn't hold him, and he sits today at the right hand of the Father in heaven. The Hebrews 10, 12. Now, the word of God guarantees <clears throat> the believer's resurrection. Okay, Paul writes in 1 Corinthians, where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? So that, that gives us complete assurance that death has no power over us. So knowing that <clears throat> he has, death has no power over us, that should be your, your hope and your excitement to know that the enemy cannot take us down. He can't. Okay, he is coming again, and the dead in Christ will be raised up, and those who are alive <clears throat> at his coming will be changed and receive new glorified bodies. First Thessalonians 4. So that proves who Jesus is. It demonstrates that God accepted Jesus' sacrifice on our behalf. It shows that God has the power to raise us from the dead, and it guarantees that the bodies of those who believe in Christ will not remain dead but will be resurrected unto eternal life. We know. Okay, so I just wanted to say how important I thought this really was when I actually went over her video and I heard her say Esther and Easter. Now, I don't know what it exactly means, but I just wanted to give you the meanings of, of both of these. So um, I want you to take a listen as, we, as I'm sitting here. So that you know, when I, if you can hear it, you know, I was able to hear it and the Lord um, directed me to, to speak. So, um, to, 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 so I can understand. I've never really interpreted in tongues before, but I really felt that this was important. So here you go and listen. Your uh, wedding feast. Bam. Right. He did a wedding. He did. He, he performed. The, the, he made the memorials for my today. It's the ultimate art to kill my ass. Did you have a good sister? My name, but did you have a good sister? But can you know about the chair? Easter by a command and near, but Jack got a bias to check for cutting your butt. Easter the back of the church at the arts of the police. She come on my east boy at the command of the east back here. My church at the at the bottom way to check eyes to eat a bowl of snare. East back here to check at the boy at the ever cut near by the church. Cabayas, dear, but the bowl. Who's the bear to give me an attitude about the Bacayan 
nyo ba yan sa chow? Sa ay sa chow ba siya? Iba yan sa koy mga tibas. Tiki mga yan niya ba siya sa ah? Oh my god. Okay, I just wanted you to hear that again, and um, I believe I believe that the Lord is telling us um to prepare. Keep, and, and to keep preaching the gospel. Look, um, Esther prepared for a whole year. We have been preparing and preparing and warning and warning. And I'm telling you, our time is coming. Just like Esther's. The Jews are going to be saved. It's their day. It's their trial coming up. The tribulation. And those who didn't listen right now have to go through this fire. <clears throat> so they can join us later. So um, I just wanted to share that and just just know <laughs> behold the lion of the tribe of judah the root of david has triumphed you guys the lord the lion of judah is about to return do i know that he's returning on easter i don't know but he could do i know this for sure only he knows for sure but this warning i'm telling you it means something so be prepared stay prepared I love you guys. God bless you and shalom.